welcome everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm with Acuity Insurance from over by Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I've been in the trucking industry for over 30 years. Hair's getting a little gray. Um, <clears throat> got a lot of things to cover today. Hopefully there'll be something for everybody. Um, can everybody hear me fine? All right. We'll take off. A um, couple of interesting things you have. So what, what I do at Acuity, really, my, my customers kind of are claims, underwriting, loss control, agents, and insureds themselves. And I provide a lot of answers. I visit a lot of motor carriers, and everybody seems to have some commonalities, and then there's some individual uh, bottlenecks or challenges that they have as well. <clears throat> One of the first things I did when I arrived at Acuity was create the Acuity Motor Carrier Toolbox. Break it down real simply, it uses this uh, motor carrier guide to improving highway safety. Um, it, it has everything in there from the application to uh, the DQF checklist, uh, things like that. Um, very good resource if you're, if you're struggling that way. If you're an acuity insured, just go onto our website. The acuity motor carrier toolbox has 480 documents in it. I jokingly say it's everything in there but the driver themselves and how to pay your fuel bill. So, and then you guys have a Michigan uh, trucker's guide as well. Many of you are beyond that, but um, for those that aren't, those are two good resources to start with. So some of my experience, I started out uh, raised on a dairy farm up in northern Wisconsin. Uh, then when mom and dad retired, I got into trucking. While going to college, I worked for Stan Cook & Sons, hauling a lot of Best Buy freight, Martin Transport. Basically left out on Fridays, got back on, uh, on uh, Monday morning in time for school or Sunday night, whatever. Um, when I got into my own business, it was basically the timber industry. Did that for about 15 years, had a very good time uh, doing that. The wife wanted to retire, <laughs> so I found, she found me the job with Acuity, and she retired. <laughs> But we had a lot of fun doing that. So, um, my presentation is going to talk about driver hiring. But there's a lot of things that go before that that I want you to be aware of and, and kind of consider. Some of the, the things we're going to be talking about today is the underwriters, loss control, what they're looking at, how that all ties into the FMCSA initiatives, technology, the top 10 is, in industries, issues, uh, managing drivers, safety, and then some other things to remember. <clears throat> Motor carriers need quality partners. I think this kind of picture kind of sums it up. And the question in your mind is, who is at fault for that accident right there? We don't have to answer now. We'll explore that a little bit further. But certainly, it's, it's a true straight statement that motor carriers need quality partners. Um, in my years of operating business and being in management, I learned the value of taking responsibility. A lot of people today, they try and shirk that responsibility. Well, it's not my fault. I didn't do it. And that's unfortunate because there's nothing more empowering than taking responsibility for things that are wrong, especially as an owner, especially as a manager, because then you can fix it. So it's, it's really great to have that. And you'll, you'll, you'll just empower yourself to make those improvements. So. <clears throat> You know, as an owner and as a manager in the company, um, Bob here is in charge for safety, if I can use, use that. He's in charge for safety, so that's his area. He has to take responsibility for that. And it really gives him the tools then to make those decisions. By the way, if there's any frustrated safety people in here that are, are struggling to get things done and, and move safety further along in their company, um, put it in terms of finance. That's, that's what this all boils down to is dollars and cents. So if you have a safety initiative that you want to move forward, put it in terms of return on investment. What's this going to cost and what's our return going to be and how long? So <clears throat> as we go through this presentation, I want us to remember empowering our employees. I go to so many motor carriers and they're like, oh, can't find drivers. Or, or they're, we're, we're having high turnover rate. But there's no program in place, no, no thought given to when you do hire an employee, what, what keeps them there? How do you have them be successful? 
real quick, can't spend a lot of time on this, but this is huge. You hire a new employee. If they're not successful within your organization, if they can't meet their goals, then how are they going to help you meet your goals as a motor carrier or a trucking company? They're, they're failing on theirs. They're going to fail on yours as well. Very important. <clears throat> um, and finally, before the presentation begins, audit. What gets, what gets audited gets done. If it's not audited, it doesn't usually get done. So a couple of tips. So what does uh, underwriting look, look for when you're with a, an insurance company? Um, rates haven't gone up at all in truck insurance, right? They went down. Oh, no. Totally, they've, they've gone up across the board. Um, it's it's uh, just the nature of what's taking place out there. We're going to talk about that on, on, on future slides, so give me a second on that. Next slide, I think. <clears throat> the underwriters look for the supplemental application, the safety measurement system, and CAB. We're going to talk about that. They're going to look at your loss runs, your if the miles, the areas you're running, how many miles you're running, um, the violation history, the driver violation list, loss control reports, and your financial statements. So why are rates rising? Um, my first truck, this is not a picture, it's similar to what I bought. Um, the color scheme is a little different. I bought it back in 1986. It was roughly $2,800, I believe I paid for. It was a 1970 IH with a 13-speed Fuller and a 903 Cummins. They call it a 903 nothing, but uh, didn't have a lot of power for a V8 diesel. Um, in the last eight years, the average cost of a truck has increased 45%. So a bumper on, like, say, the Western Stars that I have in, in my little company right now, they're $200. You get a bumper today with radar and LiDAR and all those things for several thousand dollars. Um, so that's one reason. The other reason is the industry as a whole, if I can make a general blanket, blanket statement, a lot of insurance companies left the industry, pulled out. We call that pistoning in and pistoning out of a market. Um, good companies try and weather the storm and stay and price accordingly. So they're obviously not going to lose money for very long before they either raise the rates or leave the market entirely. And uh, don't shoot the messenger, but that's happened. And uh, I, I pay higher rates just alongside you guys as well. So, um, lawsuits. You, if you ever go through Indiana, um, the hammer. You know, he's got I think you know, probably only a few hundred billboard signs advertising. You know, sue that trucking company, that big bad trucking company. So those are some of the reasons. Um, you think of anything else? Um, you know, another reason for rates climbing. We'll, we'll talk about this when we get into the cab report. Um, the different quality of the motor carrier. So, <clears throat> so FMCSA, basically FMCSA from my point of view, uh, their purpose is to reduce crashes, injuries, and fatalities involving from large truck operations and remove unsafe companies from operation. They have roughly a thousand uh, state employees and 12,000 excuse me, roughly 1,000 federal employees and 12,000 state partners that they work with for those DOT audits and things like that. Go ahead. I can tell you from traveling the country and visiting motor carriers, there's some extremely good motor carriers and I learn when I go to every one of those. There are also those motor carriers that I'm shocked by. Now, the great thing about being shocked by a motor care, if they're willing to uh, improve, they're easily helped. But uh, here's one of, the, one of the reasons FMCSA exists. Oh. 
So we're all familiar with the CMV. They're not carrying 16,000 or 28,000. Most of them are 80,000 across the country. Michigan's heavier depending on how many axles you can put underneath the truck. Show that one more time. I'll talk about that a little bit. Play it one more time if you can. <coughs> so why have insurance rates gone up? There were 27 people killed in that intersection. That truck was just an intermodal truck, nothing special. Um, but it's simply the kinetic energy. Look how it swept that, that intersection. So when you talk about a driver qualification file, it becomes pretty important after looking at that. I'll go to some motor carriers, doesn't matter the size, can be small, can be large. One of the things I'll ask is the DQF. And sometimes I'll get this great big smile from this little motor carrier. They'll pull, turn, turn in their chair and they'll open up a drawer and it's just letter perfect. They just do everything perfect. I think the largest I was at was a, a carrier that had 50 trucks. Uh, they didn't know what I was talking about. And actually said to me, um, give us a couple of weeks to put that together for you and we'll, we'll, we'll get that to you. Um, they said they were doing it. Well, obviously they weren't doing it. <clears throat> so the safety measurement system basically has the seven basics and they are all from that green book of regulation. So it's on safe driving, hours of service, driver fitness, controlled substance, vehicle maintenance, hazards, materials, that kind of thing. Your underwriters look at this and they look at your scores and here's how. Before we get to that though, we'll kind of look at how this works, the CSA program. So in the old days, they just really, it was more of who came to light in their area. Now it's much more scientific how it, how it works. Um, if there's a, a roadside inspection or a crash, the intake on the SMS, safety measurement system, is a safety data collection. So it was a violation given or anything like that. Then the measurement, that's where it goes into your seven basics, all right, on safe driving, things like that. Then the evaluation, if there was any intervention. <laughs> goes into the safety measurement system, which is, they said it's been updated, and you see all the data for your company is in there. <clears throat> well, insurance companies have what's called Central Analysis Bureau, or short for CAB. It makes it very easy to look at this information. So when you have these underwriters, they're looking at this information. It's one of the first things they pull. Now, it's not certainly the only thing they look at, but it's one of the things they look at. <clears throat> so they're going to look at your DOT rating, which basically is your last in-house audit. They're going to look at your inspection selection system. That's your roadside scores. If you're in the green, I think it's 0 to 49. They're often likely to have you pass by and not, not pay attention to. If you're in yellow, 50 to 74, um, it's their choice. If they're not doing anything, they're going to pull your truck over. If you're in the red, um, if, if they at all can, they'll pull your truck over. So this, as the officers before were saying, as your truck comes in, and the cameras are taking a picture of your DOT, your MC, and your license plate, they're going to know before you get to the, the scale house whether or not they're going to pull you around or not oftentimes. Um, the other thing I want to mention on this while, while we're at this slide is on a lot of the scales out there today, they're super scales. And if you come across a scale with you know, a five axle truck, it's got 10 brakes, seven are warm but not hot, two, one is really hot and two are cold. Is that truck gonna get pulled around? The truck's gonna get pulled around every time. So driver vehicle inspection and audits become so important. <coughs> so that, here's your uh, out of service violations. Uh, this particular company, the average was a uh, 20.72, this company had 42.31, and the driver was 10% versus 5.5. So 
So getting back to rates, this carrier actually um, is having a difficult time. Their, their insurance carrier dropped them. Um, uh, they're paying high premiums. Um, they're not insured with Acuity. It's, a, it's another company. This carrier is actually kind of a, I know them, a, a little bit of a cowboy operation. Uh, <clears throat> then this is a, a great chart that the underwriters use. And we, there were two things that were in alert with this particular carrier, if you remember that. It was hours of service, and it was vehicle maintenance. And I, if I visit 100 motor carriers, their vehicle maintenance, it, it happens so much, it's so common, I made a, a little bit of a, a joke to remember out of it. It's called the bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich of the uh, violations on the maintenance basic. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Does anybody know what the BLT sandwich? Brakes, lights, and tires. They're going to look at brakes, lights, and tires first thing. So is your trucking company, when you're out there doing the driver vehicle inspection report, the pre and post, are your drivers adequately trained to inspect the brakes, lights, and tires? Is there a mechanism that if a safety defect is found within your organization, that your repair shop can fix that, or that your third party repair shop can fix that. What is that program? That's often the breakdown. All the drivers are doing it. Well, they're not doing it. They're pencil whipping it on the e-log or something like that, but are they doing it? Our biggest insured within acuity, <clears throat> trucking company, 500 and some trucks, I believe, at last count. Um, he owns a lot of other businesses as well. You'll find that gentleman actually walking through his fleet. Now, he has HR, he has safety, he has mechanics, but he will actually walk through his own fleet at the end of the shift. Not every shift, I'm sure. And he'll audit what's going on, the condition of the trucks. Are the lights left on? Are the cabs clean? Those kind of things, just to keep an eye on that. The petroleum industry will actually put like a little neon tag or sticker on their vehicles just to make sure that the DVR is actually taking place. It could be on the oil dipstick, it could be on a slack adjuster, it could be in a dump truck operation on the pin where the thing comes down over that. Just something that says to the driver, you know, we're looking at it. And it's a coaching opportunity if the driver doesn't catch it, now you know they're not doing it. If they do catch it, you know, it's an attaboy or a little, uh, $10 gift card or something like that. Certainly not used on the whole fleet, but used on maybe three, four, five percent of the fleet every day or at least several times a week. <clears throat> Remember, what gets audited gets done. And as managers and owners, we're in a position to do that. We want to take that responsibility and improve. We've worked with motor carriers. I worked with one motor carrier, <coughs> it's pretty large. It was here in Michigan. They had a 187 percent loss ratio. So, great question. For every dollar they paid in an insurance premium, the insurance company paid out a dollar eighty-seven. Well, that's not sustainable, right? Nobody's going to do that for very long. I went in there with loss control and the agent, and we worked with that motor carrier. Um, right now, I think they're at a thirty-six percent loss ratio. Rates are going down. Everybody's doing better, but I had 18 recommendations and uh, when I was in there with that, with that motor carrier and they've done a really good job of following up and putting in programs and training their employees, basically empowering their employees to be successful and then auditing that those programs were successful. Mm -hmm. Our trucking industry, it's a great idea. The problem with it is not all motor carriers are created equal. Some motor carriers will, like say, turn around and they'll have that big smile as they open up their perfect driver qualification files. Other motor carriers, scared. When I go out into a shop, I, I, I assist 50 some loss control people who are looking at our accounts. <clears throat> you, know, you know what I basically tell them to look at? If you want to do a real down and dirty of a trucking company, Talk about their DQFs. If they can talk about their DQFs, they're probably doing a good job with them. 
If they can talk about employee training and what, how that works in their company, probably doing a good job. Then you tour the shop, look for their brake lining pads, their takeoffs. You keep them around because the liners are worth a few bucks, right? So, quick story. Uh, an underwriter manager wanted me to go to visit this motor carrier. They had a bunch of Ford Sterlings. As we all know, they're one of the ugliest trucks uh, ever made. Um, personal opinion. Good trucks. But they were all older. Ford, that, I don't know when Ford quit making Ford Sterlings, but it's been many years now. And it, the Acuity was doing well with them. They, they liked the partnership, but the trucks were, were getting old. Go out, Cliff, and, and look at this with loss control. What do you think? I went out there, and I mean, they had a shop that was second to none. They were replacing kingpins, the pins and bushings, and the springs, anything they needed. They, they had it. But they had a very strong driver vehicle inspection process. They audited the process that was completed, and their shop was prepared to take that in. And they did have a couple of spare trucks as well if that truck was put out of service. So I was able, and I looked at their brake linings. They had a big tow of brake linings and probably inspected 100 brake linings. I found none that were past the wear mark. I go to other carriers and inspect, and I'll see rivets hanging, part of the pads gone, you know. So it's it's easy, <laughs> but probably the biggest is empowering of the employee. I'm going to kind of walk you through something I, I find interesting. This was a truck driver hired. She went to truck driving school. She was hired by a motor carrier after she got her CDL from the state, and then some bad things happened. <coughs> so with the truck driver shortage, of course, we're tempted to use less experienced drivers. You see the picture. Who's at fault? The bridge. <laughs> the bridge. <laughs> you must be a logger <laughs> from the UP <laughs> or Wisconsin. <coughs> so was it, was it Mary? Who's at fault? So Mary went through the truck driving school. Mary got her CDL from the state issued tester. The motor carrier hired Mary. Mary didn't know how to back up a truck. She couldn't back. She was driving a semi, she couldn't back. She was not comfortable backing up a truck. I asked this question in front of 100 underwriters at Acuity. What do you think they said? Who was at fault? Mary, the driver. The real world, my opinion, and this is just IMO, my opinion. Would a more thorough driver orientation have mattered in Mary's case? Would it have been discovered that Mary couldn't back the truck up? Would that have been part of the solution, maybe help Mary back the truck up? Here's a person that's just ready and willing to go to work, but she needed a little more. She wasn't ready, she was willing. <coughs> so, can you imagine being a driver and you just took out basically an antique bridge that was responsible for getting traffic into your town? Can you imagine Mary being beside that truck? What a horrible, horrible experience to to stand there, talk to the enforcement officers, maybe call the company, tell them what happened. It's horrible. So who's responsible? The truck driving school? The state for issuing her the CDL? Maybe the motor carrier that may or may not have given her the road test? Was driver training used? Was driver finishing used? Was there a final sign-off that she was prepared? Was there an audit that this all worked? Remember the audit? In my humble opinion, the last person in line to blame is Mary. Remember, we have to take responsibility. That's precious. I would not give up taking responsibility for anything in front of, unless it's in front of a judge, then I'm totally not responsible. 
There's a time and a place, I guess. But, but in, run, in managing my trucking company, the buck stops here, and I won't give that up because I can audit things, I can fix things, and I can improve things. <coughs> in Mary's case, the, the simply, if anybody had done their job prior, this, this might not have happened to Mary. In, in some cases, Mary is indeed the victim here. Because if any of you have kids or, or nieces and nephews or a teenager, you've got to remember, let's, let's consider the teenager. They know everything, right? They know everything. My kid is 13 years old. He just had his birthday. He's starting to know everything. Dad used to, now he does. But you do not know what you do not know. You cannot take a new driver and expect them to know what they simply don't know. They don't know to know it. But we know. We're managers, we're owners, we have experience. So how do we create a program that empowers them to be successful? When you have that, that also affects your driver retention rate significantly. So never give up that privileged responsibility to improve your, improve your uh, company. <clears throat> Here's a couple of things. I was told, oh my gosh, this is a great motor carrier. It was in, uh, it was in Gary, Indiana. Great motor carrier. You've got to see it. We've got to write this. It's wonderful. That was a picture, that was typical of what I saw. Um, remember, the, the, there was a lady doing the driver qualifications and things like that, she, and, and everything was in place. If we'd have stopped there, man, it would have been a great carrier. But hey, let's go out in the shop, let's take a look at some things. And looking in the shop, I got a few red flags as I'm walking around. Let's go out and look at the equipment. And you know, you see things like where the slack adjuster's not even hooked up to the, the rod of the air can. Things like that, hardware, spring brakes, puking out, things like that. So is the driver, driver vehicle inspection being done? What else is missing? Our largest carrier, a guy who has many businesses and much money and very successful, he's personally walking his fleet, looking at things like that. Maybe not every day, but he, he certainly does. And you can tell the results are there. So it's interesting here, um, there was a death in the family and they sold the business. So some things were being kind of let through the cracks. Um, there wasn't a good secession plan. Um, a family member ended up buying the business, hired, hired a new safety director. She had just actually broken her, somehow her knee. <laughs> and I'm saying, you can see things that I'm talking about. You can, you can see it through the wheel well here. She said, no, I, I want to get down there. So with a big cast on her leg, she actually crawled underneath the truck and was looking at these things. So some, some changes were actually made. Some people were uh, um, maybe talked to, maybe let go. But we currently insure this fleet, and they're doing a really good job. Um, why would the vice grips be on the uh, air can line like that? Anybody? So you don't have to use your voice? That's why the tape's on. Yeah. Because <laughs> the, the brake chamber failed. Yeah, the pancake in the brake chamber failed. So that's not actually not a bad picture, right? If you're stranded in the middle of the road and it's safe to do so, man, a vice grip, clamp off that line, you can pull yourself off, you back the brake off, pull yourself off, you're good to go. And then you're not going to lose air pressure on the rest of the, the truck either. Very short-term fix. We use it a lot in northern Wisconsin. I think the UP does too. The other one in the lower uh, right-hand corner I just love. Remember the saying, you don't know what you don't know? Duct tape is probably not going to cure 120 PSI coming through a, a little hole. <coughs> so for many of our carriers, we're, what are the fundamentals? What do we start at? The DQF, the driver road test. Driver vehicle inspection reports, driver training, empowering your drivers to be successful. There's a company out there called Bison Transport. They got a lot of videos 
on driver training and empower training. It's just like the Buffalo, Bison, B-I-S-O-N. It is a Canadian company. But I found them and they do a really good job and they share it uh, with YouTube videos on kind of how they do it. And I really enjoyed watching what they do and they talk a lot about their driver finishing. So if you have a little time over a cup of coffee, type in Bison driver finishing. It's a really good watch and uh, kind of get your feet wet on where to go with that. <clears throat> and then a true culture of safety where everyone understands we're all accountable for safety. There was a, sorry about an, another story. There was a fatality. I was asked to go out onto <clears throat> flatbed operation. He was hauling a number of uh, sheets of plywood, four by eight sheet bundles of plywood. And it was loaded by somebody else the prior evening. Driver showed up about 5 o'clock. It had to be delivered at the customer's around 7, 7.30. Driver took off. There was only one strap per bundle, so one four-inch strap per bundle, maybe a total of six bundles, whatever fit on the trailer. Um, of course, a car pulled out in front of the driver. Driver hit his brakes. Every bundle shifted, including the one right by the cab. And the, the, they came in the cab of the truck and actually ended the driver. So I went down there offering support for the motor carrier. What can we do? You know, do you need anything? Claims was obviously handling it on their end. And it was very interesting to me that the safety department was without, without doubt totally blaming the driver. It was the driver's fault. Now the safety department guy was also the dispatcher, very spread thin person, so I'm not gonna say it was completely his fault, but he had a lot of responsibilities spread very thin. So anyway, it's totally blaming the driver, the dead guy. So it encouraged me to ask other questions. Well, was the driver trained in cargo securement? Well, no, no, we don't, we don't do that. We just hire them. Was there maybe additional cargo securement available and maybe like a job lockbox and everybody knows that the key is underneath here? So if you do arrive in a situation like that, you can then put on additional cargo securement. Well, no, we don't have anything like that. Well, was the driver told that if it's just on safe, call your supervisor? If it's just illegal, if it's just not right, call your supervisor, ask for direction. Well, no, we don't do anything like that. Well, what they did have was a fatality. After my little tour of the company, I made a recommendation back to underwriting, and um, that took care of that. With that particular company, that guy hauling the four by eight sheets of plywood, did that motor carrier empower that driver to be successful? If you have a quality driver, I mean a really good driver, and you treat that person, male or female, like that, are they gonna stay? Are they gonna say, this is a company I wanna retire with? How are we empowering our truck drivers to be successful within our organization for themselves so that they can be successful for us? <clears throat> Some of the things that, that uh, Acuity has that uh, in a visual, the Acuity Motor Care Toolbox, there's 480 documents in there. Basically, I call them operational documents that help a motor carrier in their operation. A lot of them are in Word format, so you can save it, and you can kind of make it your own. Um, then we, we send out, you know, posters and, and things like that. Trucker Talks, a, a quarterly magazine called Trucker Focus. Um, if you're starting a little bit maybe behind the eight ball, again, a really great thing is a motor carrier's guide to improving highway safety. You can download that on your smartphone right now. It's a PDF maybe 90 pages. It's, it's a great tool if you're kind of behind the eight ball. You can have it in this room right now. And then the other thing I wanted to mention <coughs> was the safety management cycle. Remember the seven basics? 
hours of service, unsafe driving, things like that. The safety management cycle, well, we'll start here. FMCSA has the, the book of regulations, it's a stick. Then they have the SMS, could be a stick or could be nice, depends how you're doing with the, the safety measurement system. And then remember, every insurance company has the Central Analysis Bureau, not everyone, but a lot of them where they have a variation of it. But there's something that a lot of people don't know about, and it's called the safety management cycle. And FMCSA put that together with industry, and it goes through each one of the basics, hours of service, maintenance, unsafe driving. It goes through the, the policies and procedures, the roles and responsibilities, the qualifications and training, things like that. It is for an advanced motor carrier that wants to get better yet. If I'm with a motor carrier that's cutting edge, they have all their ducks in place. They are beyond compliance. I encourage everybody to get beyond compliance because, you know, compliance is really basic, right? Do we really have to be told we need to change the brakes on a truck or it needs to have, you know, reasonable tires with good, we shouldn't have to be told that or, or that, you know, we don't want to have a drug addict um, <laughs> in the truck. I got to tell you one story from Ohio. Um, truck driver was a small family operation. They started hauling for Amazon and all of a sudden they find themselves with about 20 trucks. And they were, they were having some losses. And he sits down on the table, real busy guy, real busy guy. And he says, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but my best truck, truck driver does cocaine, but he works long hours, seven days a week. <laughs> okay, but together we're, we're, we're making a difference. And I think some of the, the things FMCSA is doing with it, like the hours of service, the five new additions, drug and alcohol clearinghouse, are very positive. One of the things I don't want to see is like the uh, split your time is if the three hours off duty, if the, if the truck driver is now lumping freight for three hours. You know, that's kind of why we went away from the paper log book anyway, right? Anybody in here old enough to remember uh, you go off duty not driving? Maybe you're in the sleeper berth, maybe you're off duty. You're lumping freight on the dock. You're switching regular pallets into chef pallets or vice versa. Now you're really tired. Now you go back on duty and you go drive. So that's kind of why all that stuff came in the first place. So great things that are coming down the road, but we still have to be careful. Um, how you get into the Acuity Motor Care Toolbox, there's the Acuity website, and um, there's a login. Anybody that wants to uh, have this presentation or ask me questions, just leave a piece of paper or hand me a piece of paper or your business card, and I can send you this presentation as well as anything else you may have um, a need for within your, in your, in your company. My role is really to help the motor carriers improve their bottom line. I want them to be more profitable. And the way they do that is by increasing safety by empowering their drivers to be successful, things like that. So hopefully you found this presentation of benefit and uh, I very much appreciate your time. Ask me anything, leave me a piece of paper or uh, email and I can get stuff to you as, as needed. If you just want my, my phone number, it's 920-458-9130. Uh, I'm at extension 1740. Uh, my email is cliff.johnson. So cliff.johnson, the at mark acuity.com. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank very you. Much.